I can't think of any other science scheme where you get access to people and resources in the same way that you do in the Race Against Dementia Dyson Fellowship. It's really phenomenal. We can help Claire examine brain tissue at an atomic or molecular level. We have the equipment here to do that, and we have the analysts and scientists here to do that. Dementia has been a, a huge part of my life now. It's the biggest part of my life. My wife was diagnosed about six years ago. Since that time, Helen has lost a lot of her original self. And to try and find a cure, considering that some, well, more than 42 years now, has there never been any cure or even preventive medicine? To me, that's a terrible failure of the medical world. And we must change that. So that's where Race Against Dementia became a reality. James Dyson came on board and was very generous with his contribution towards Race Against Dementia. From one vacuum cleaner to a variety of different products. And the only place that I know of that has that type of mentality and skills is Formula One. And that's the only way I think that we are going to break through because we're going to find a different way of doing things. And in Claire Durrant, who's the researcher that Jackie introduced us to, she's you know, almost thinking that the way people are currently looking at things is the wrong way. And I, I'm just so pleased to be able to support that sort of research. So one of the things that is really unique about the project I'm trying to do is that I'm really wanting to establish new human models of Alzheimer's disease. And the brain is really, really hard to study. So it's locked inside our skull and things like MRI scanners, they can only see very vague details. What we need to do is look on a microscopic level at living brain to understand what's happening. So the way I do this is that if someone who has a neurosurgery operation, the surgeon, in order to get to the brain tumour inside, has to remove normal pieces of brain. Now that would normally be thrown in the bin, but with the patient's permission and with me standing by with an oxygen cylinder in the surgery room with them, I can rush that piece of brain tissue to the lab. I then cut it into very, very thin sections. So then you have these little pieces of living human brain alive in dishes. Now that I've proven that we can keep healthy brain alive for this time, we can add different drugs, we can add things that we think might cause Alzheimer's disease into this and watch these changes happen in real time. Over the last 10 years or so, we've been doing very serious research into battery development. And that involves looking at the chemistry of batteries, what goes on inside batteries at a molecular level, at almost an atomic level. We can help Claire examine brain tissue at that sort of level. Well, I've designed my experiments based around the equipment that you normally have exposure to. But here, when someone tells you about, well, we use this all the time for this kind of experiment, could that not be applied to a biology system? Well, actually, yeah, it really easily could. It's just people haven't thought of doing it before because they're two disciplines that normally sit on parallel tram lines. I would have never heard of this microscope if we hadn't you know, done this collaboration, let alone even thought to use it. So we can potentially find much smaller, much more unusual things than would be possible with the microscopes that we have.